The idea for the Center for Environment and National Security really stems back to the time I was still in government. About five, six years ago, I was the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Oceans, Environment, and Science. And the government, Department of Defense, Department of State, and technical agencies wanted to know what are we going to do about important environmental problems that affect our national security. A really bad one was water. We saw that around the globe, safe, clean drinking water was already in short supply. About two billion people, really, don't have access to safe, clean drinking water. But it's getting worse, because the population is increasing, and we're rapidly drawing down sources of safe, clean drinking water. The national security agencies themselves are going out to examine how they will be affected in the future, because they have looked at uh, the evidence, the very broad and deep evidence, the evidence which is added to by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and they uh, want to do the prudent thing. I was very happy, therefore, to come to Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Here, we have the science. We have the scientists pursuing these questions, and we have important answers we can provide to the problems of the environment and national security. The center started uh, October 2009 and we've taken off really very rapidly because we know that we have got something here that's a benefit to our society and to the resolution of environmental problems. We've got the great science produced by the thousands of scientists here and we're going to bring that together in applied questions. For example, the center is working with the National Marine Fisheries Service to take a look at how to stop the trade in endangered species such as sea turtles. And you'll find when you look at the trade in endangered species such as sea turtles, it is the drug lords, it is the gun runners, it are the people who are outside of the law in an international context that are committing also these crimes. Trade in endangered species is uh, another means for outlaws to raise money, and they raise it in the billions of dollars. We're also working together with our climate scientists here at Scripps to see the impact of climate on uh, the coral atolls in the Pacific. We hope that the work we do on impacts of climate on the coral atolls will be spread to other island nations as they plant, make their own adaptation plans for climate change. We're very excited about a June 21 through 23 symposium on climate and national security. We have great speakers coming. We have a uh, representative of the president, uh, Dr. Sherry Abbott. We have a high-ranking Department of Defense official, Amanda Dory. We have Admiral David Titley, who's got the lead in the Navy for what's happening to climate change. Plus, great scientists, Walter Monk, Dan Kane, John Orcutt. On the one hand, we're going to look at what will happen in the Asia-Pacific region for climate and what will that will mean for national security. On the other hand, we're going to also be asking ourselves, what do we need to do to improve the tools for forecasting climate change? I know the military will be there. I hope business is there as well, particularly those involved in long-run things like insurance or construction. Secondly, we're going to have uh, scientists there, scientists from all over California and the United States, who will be looking at these difficult questions of making better forecasts. We play an important role here because we uh, are focused in on applications of science. We're focused in on real world problems, in particular environmental problems. And a lot of people are inspired by that. They want to see how they can contribute to making sure our planet is healthy 20 years from now. Thank you.